Because when Dr. Dominic asked me to talk about stress, the first thing I thought about is a concept from my own field called personal boundaries. And that term sounds kind of boring to me too, personal boundaries, very boring. And yet, highly likely that most of the problems of the world that involve human behavior are caused by a lack of knowledge about personal boundaries, believe it or not. All domestic violence is, all bullying is, all wars are, ultimately. The border of a country is the boundary of that country. And we all have our own personal national border for each of us. This is why I drew a circle up on the board. And it's going to pertain very strongly to what we do about stress. We all have a, a personal boundary. So really, there are only two personally solvable problems in your list. There are only two personally solvable problems in your list. Because only two of them are located inside here, where we do have 100% control. Control. What do we really want to happen with stress? Control. We want to control it or prevent it. Or now that it's around, we want to make it go away. So one of the prime functions of having a personal boundary is that it is 100% of what you control about life. And what's outside of it is actually not 25 or 10 or anything else but 0% control about what is happening. So all of these things you've listed that have to do with what's outside you are uncontrollable. But I hope to show you quickly, they are still solvable. They just happen to be uncontrollable. Corporate expansion, do you control that? Unless, even if you're the CEO, you may not. Uh, clutter. Yeah, you can. Okay, clutter. <laughs> you're the clutterer, buddy. You're the clutterer. So, all right, that's Guilty. the way inside you. Guilty. It's the old lady. Guilty. It's the elves that's the, yeah. under the couch. Okay. Uh, financial stability. Are you referring to national financial stability or personal? All right, so maybe if it's personal, that's inside. And so we're revising this a little bit. Your living space for two. People who text, people who do this, people who do that, which gives us uh, a major problem and uh, really the, the crux of stress. People who text is one of your questions. People who are texting are a problem. This is a people outside of you and therefore outside of your control. So what can we do about people texting? Or people who do this or people who do that? We just stay in the house and don't see any people. <laughs> that, that's correct. We just stay in the house and don't see any people. It, it's outside of us. It's outside of us, right? So we don't control it. And there are a bunch of other things that the boundary consists of. Uh, it also consists of what we are responsible for. Okay? It's not just about other people and how they let us down. Responsibility. So we have 100% control and responsibility of what's inside of us. We have 0% control and absolute responsibility for what's outside of us. And the boundary is the, uh, the marker between the two. So, there's a little thing we do. I'm going to show you in a minute how this works. Your boundary is a lot like a, a bank account, or a vault, or a home, or your body. It is a vessel, a container. Okay? And you can't buy it at the container store. But it is a vessel, and it contains all of your resources. It contains your material resources, it also contains your psychological resources, of which there are at least four major ones. One of them I call your self-esteem. Your self-esteem. 
Now notice I'm using a very vague term that I don't think is very useful when I hear uh, motivational speakers and you know, personal growth gurus and coaches use the term. The idea of self-esteem, you know, it's a very ordinary word. We use it often, right? People have low self-esteem or high self-esteem, but what exactly does that mean? What it means in my terms, and the way I'm going to define it, and the way that you can practically use it, is it is just your emotional energy, and it is a positive emotional energy. Okay, and that's part of what we need to learn in our 15 minutes here. How do you fill yourself up with self-esteem? That's part of the boundaries function. And when you're a baby, you have tons of holes all through here. You're born with the weakest boundary imaginable. It's like Swiss cheese. Anything can get in or out. Your self-esteem can always be draining out. And this is one of the biggest problems with depression that is not curable ever by medication. In fact, it's probably the reason that we see medications kind of poop out or fail in a person who's depressed. It's because they don't fix self-esteem. No medicine has ever fixed somebody's self-esteem. The start of fixing self-esteem, your emotional energy, your positive emotional energy, your friendship ability, and your capacity for love is what this is, is by having a more solid boundary. Babies eventually learn, their parents discipline them and teach them a boundary. Parents help build a boundary for a baby until you become a teen and then you have boundary breakdown again because you need to branch <laughs> off from your own parents and do your own thing. But what is a hole in the boundary? This thing where self-esteem is always draining out. And the more it drains out, the more depressed you feel in a non-biological way or a, more of a psychological way, a way that medicines can't do anything about. And you feel more anxious as your self-esteem drains out. And this is because in the model that I espouse, self-esteem actually has just two varieties. Self-esteem just has two varieties. And I'm going to define them. You can play with this and see if you agree. Self-esteem equals what I call well-being which is maternal and nurturing. It's a sense of having enough of what you need. It's maternal, it's like mothering. And the other one is confidence. Confidence feels like being fathered. And I don't mean this to be gender uh, discriminatory. There are females who are confident and fatherly and there are males who are nurturing and motherly. Okay, we all need a source of mothering and fathering. Even if it's from our same single mom. She's both. Or dad, single dad, who's, who's both. Nurturing and gives us confidence. These two things combined are self-esteem. And that composes your entire ability at being happy and being a friend. There is hurt, hurt, and loss. Hurt and loss are the two types of stress. If hurt gets into your boundary, it has a new name now, and that name is anger. If hurt gets into your boundary, it has a new name, and that name is anger. And what has been depleted from you is called well-being. It has taken away some of your, your feelings of being nurtured or having enough of what you need. Hurt takes away well-being. Stress cancels self-esteem. Have you ever noticed, let's make it practical, have you ever noticed a new person in the workplace and you know it's a toxic workplace and it burns people out and they quit, big turnover rate. But there's this new, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed person in the workplace, and they're like, hey, everybody, how are you? What's your name? And they're all happy, and you're like, they're going to they're gonna learn. They're going to find out what it's like around here, right? Well, that's because they're coming in with a, a big tank of self-esteem. But this workplace is so stressful and so toxic, it has ways of getting in. In fact, getting, quote, under your skin. And if you're there long enough in that workplace, it's going to deplete your tank 
of self-esteem. And now you are jaded, depressed, maybe fearful here and there too, injured in some way, demasculinized, defeminized by the workplace. It's depleting you, this stressful, toxic workplace. But it's coming from outside of you when you go to that workplace. So your boundary, once again, it is a shield. It is a shield that can block stress, which is hurt or loss, and bounce it off and make it go away. Everything in life that is stressful is a hurt or a loss. But it is caused by people. It's caused by people. Because of one thing that you just brought up, which is, can we do this to ourselves? Is it possible to stress ourselves? Yes, it is. And what that is called, where we take our energy, our happiness, our, our self-esteem, our sense of well-being, which is our sense of having enough of what we need in life, or our confidence, our ability to dare to do things with uncertainty or no proof that it will work out, to take risks, in other words, this kind of energy, confidence, and to burn it and just waste it, wallowing in what we don't control. And that is called, by Buddhists, suffering. So say again that uh, this part, how is this one working? This is positive emotional energy. Okay, so you have good self-esteem. Self -esteem. Self -esteem. It is yeah. stored oh, in you. But you, 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 you want to do some, like, let's, let's say, like, you know. Uh, if you want to open a new business, business. you better have a lot of confidence. Okay. But you also better have a sense of well-being that but comes you from burn them. You burn them. You're going to burn them. Okay. But you're also going to replenish them. Okay. okay. And there's a way of doing that. It's kind of too long to talk about here. But you can, you can generate these things, but when you just waste them, wishing you controlled something that you don't out here, that is suffering. To, to patch holes in your boundary, all you need to do is get good at the word no. Good at saying it, and good at hearing it. And it might be more challenging than you would think at first, because a lot of your family and friends are used to you always saying yes always treating for dinner, always giving you a ride, or giving them a ride, and you got to start saying no to them. And I want you to understand that it is the most mature thing that you could possibly do to another person to say no to them, but still associate with them. To agree to disagree. To say no to them, but still love them. Is the most mature thing you could do with boundaries. And guess what you're doing? You're patching. Do this for a child. Do this for a friend. You're patching their holes in their boundaries so they don't leak all their self-esteem anymore by you telling them no. And by you telling them no, you're also patching your own holes in your boundary, places where you're a soft touch, where you have issues, where you have thin skin, where people get under your skin really easily. You're patching your own holes. I think one of the things you teach is really fascinating, that there is a direct correlation. This isn't my area. This is you. Sure. Stress directly correlates with declining physical health yes. in like numerous ways. Well, there's, there's actually a stress score. You can take it. My, my patients are fascinated. That it's, it's, it's called the life crisis unit scare. Anything from a uh, parking ticket to a new roommate to a, moving to a new city. You get different points, 30, 40, 50 points for these different things. Even marriage is right at a 50. You get 50 points for marriage. It's a life crisis unit. You know, they did studies on thousands of people. And um, if it, you're greater than 200 within two year period, you're a very high correlation for physical damage to your body. And with that, it's uh, amazing. I, I just want a round of applause for it. <laughs>